Oh, hi. Back for another tutorial, I see. Well, that's convenient because I'm just about to take a look at the shatter effect. This is an effect that lots of us were excited to see included in HitFilm 2 Ultimate, and which is, frankly, pretty awesome. It basically allows you to take any layer in your project and shatter it into pieces, based on either an internal pattern created by HitFilm or a custom shatter map you have imported. I'm Axel Wilkinson, and if you'll join me for a bit, we'll take a look at the shatter controls and how you can use them. So we're going to start with this text layer, and I'll just drag the shatter effect onto that. And if we hit play, you can see the default behavior of the effect. Now we can make adjustments from there based on the results that we want. So in the shatter controls, the position controls are used primarily to position the effect in 3D space. Let's take a look at this by creating a point, and we'll convert that to 3D. Now in the shatter controls, if we transform from our new point, I'll back up a bit so that those shards are visible. And now, if we select that point, we can move it around in 3D space to control the orientation of the shatter effect. You might be familiar with this technique from the 3D extrusion or the atomic particle effects. It's very powerful, very useful, so I wanted to show it to you quickly before I set this back to none and move on to the other controls. All right, so I'm going to back up to where these particles are still visible, and we'll move on to the pattern controls, which control the shape of the pieces. There are two different types generated by HitFilm, bricks, which are the default, and hex. With either of these options, we can use the size slider to adjust the size of the individual shards. So we could turn those down and make them very small, or crank that up to make much larger pieces based on the requirements of our scene. If I step forward a bit, we also have the extrusion control, so you can see the edges of these pieces. As we turn up extrusion, the pieces are just getting thicker, as if the layer is thicker that they're being broken out of. Okay, I'm going to reset the pattern controls. And the third type that we can look at is custom. If we select custom, then by default, this will use the layer itself as a shatter map, breaking the layer into chunks of similar color. For text, this is a great way to break the layer into individual letters. Right now, the default fixed color is white, meaning that the white will stay put while everything else shatters around it. So we need to change that. If we just drag to select the black, now you can see that those letters in the center of the effect are just kind of popped out into their individual shapes. If you experiment with this technique on a photo or a video clip rather than text, the threshold slider here controls how different the colors in your layer have to be before they're broken into separate pieces. Open the physics control real quick and in the forces, the radius controls the size of the area affected by the shatter. So we're going to increase that just so everything is affected. 1000 ought to do it. Yeah, now all of our letters are getting shattered out of place. But each individual letter still maintains its shape. Okay, so in the custom map options, we also have a menu for the shatter map. I've got a number of layers set up here that we can use as maps. For this one, I just created a plane in hit film and then applied a fractal noise effect. Uh, same thing with this second one, fractal noise again. And then I've got this one, which is a shatter map I created based on a photo of some shattered concrete and just colored in the different pieces. This is just a photo of some cracked paint. This one is just another photo of some cracked concrete. So as I work through these, assigning each one as a shatter map, I'll advance this a bit so we can see the shatter happening. Notice how the pattern changes based on the shatter map we select. So this one has much smaller kind of horizontal pieces. So by creating your own map, you can control exactly how the effect shatters uh, if you want to. And when we're working with these type of maps that are based on photos, this threshold command is going to have a significant impact as well. So if I decrease this, now a larger number of colors are being separated out, resulting in more smaller pieces. So the physics controls adjust how our pieces move. The shatter effect basically simulates an explosion. So if you think of it like that, 
then these position controls let us reposition the origin point of the explosion. So if we move that upward, now the origin point of the explosion is up here, so it's going to affect the text below it accordingly. Okay, I'll undo that with Control Z. The radius, as we saw earlier, controls the size of the area affected, and then strength controls the force pushing the pieces. And that translates to how fast the pieces will move and how far they will go. Pieces are also pulled down by gravity, so we can control the strength of the gravity here, as well as the direction and the distance to the floor. So let me decrease this distance to 300, and now if I just jump forward, you can see how now all these pieces are landing on the floor right there, rather than falling farther down. Adjusting the gravity direction and floor distance can help when integrating this effect into a scene with a floor plane so that the pieces seem to land naturally onto that floor. Okay, I'm going to reset that by right-clicking and then jump back. In simulation, I'll close the gravity and forces controls. In simulation, viscosity allows you to thicken the virtual atmosphere the pieces are flying through. So if you imagine an explosion outside your window versus the same explosion happening underwater, the water has a much higher viscosity than air, so the pieces in an underwater explosion won't fly as far. That's basically what this control does. It thickens the environment the pieces are flying through, so at a higher viscosity, the pieces are going to slow down more quickly, and they won't fall as quickly from gravity. Rotation speed affects how much spinning the shards do as they fly. Randomness alters the trajectory of the individual pieces. And mass variance gives weight to the shards based on their size. So if I step forward a little bit further, you can see how we have a lot of small pieces and then these much bigger pieces. If we increase the mass variance, you'll see how the bigger pieces moved closer into their original position. Basically, we're just adding weight or mass to the pieces. So the bigger the piece is, the heavier it will be, and it won't fly as far from the explosion that's causing the shatter effect. Now, the mass variance control is only available when you're using a custom shatter map. If we go into the pattern and choose one of the defaults, all of these bricks are the same size. And so there's no point in varying their mass because they all have the same mass anyway. Moving on to timing. Here, if you don't want the explosion to start on frame one, then you can adjust the start position. So if we set that to two seconds, we can play through and it'll be two seconds before anything happens. Fairly straightforward. But we can also use timing maps. I've created a basic timing map here, which is just a plane with a gradient applied to it that goes from black to white. And when used as a timing map, the darkest areas will shatter first, and the brightest areas will shatter last. So this map is going to make the layer shatter from left to right. Now how long it takes to cross that distance is controlled by the start and end points. So if we have the start point set to 2 seconds, and we set the end point to 5 seconds, it'll take 3 seconds for the entire frame to shatter. Okay, so let me turn that off. I'll choose that layer as our timing map. And now when I hit play, you can see how that shatters from left to right based on the timing we've assigned. The appearance controls, I'll close the pattern and the position. The appearance controls let us select each side of our pieces and either change the color or apply an image to fill those in. So typically the front is going to be the layer that you've applied this effect to. But if you wanted to change the color of the sides of the pieces as they shatter out, you can do that or select another layer as an image to fill those in. In the render settings, you can choose whether the entire layer is rendered, whether only the shattered pieces are rendered, or only the unshattered area that remains is rendered. So if we click shattered, you can see everything disappears and it won't come into visibility until those pieces start shattering out. We can also adjust the mode to wireframe if we wanted to see quick wireframe previews of all of the pieces involved. And finally, in the render settings, we can turn on depth of field if we need to. If you want motion blur, you can turn that on here. 
Let me increase that a bit. And you can see how these pieces are blurred based on their movement. Or you can set up custom motion blur settings. And in the illumination controls, if we had a lot of lights in our comp, then maybe you don't want all of the lights to affect the shatter pieces. So if that's the case, then you can use only selected lights to illuminate the layer. By default, all the existing lights will be used. So there's a basic rundown of the shatter controls. Your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to go and shatter some stuff. Now I don't mean shattering actual stuff, I mean in hit film, so don't go breaking stuff around your house or anyone else's house. Just experiment with this effect in the software, shatter some things, see what you can come up with, and then by all means, please share your results with us on the hit film forums, because we'd love to see what you're all up to. So I'll look forward to your responses there. I thank you for taking the time to watch this with me. It's been fun. We should do it again soon.